I think that one of the keys to creating authentic content is really to kind of take a step back and stop selling. So um, I know that's funny coming from a former salesperson, but I think that if you're really honest about what you're doing you know, with your customer and you try and figure out what it is that they really want and provide that information to them, which can take a little bit of digging and isn't always obvious, then you can provide them with information that they really want. And I think it's okay to have branded space that supports your brand you know, within your content, but just be really clear about the times that you are promoting and you know, label those areas, make sure you're being transparent with the reader, and that way they'll learn to trust you and you'll have a more authentic voice. Question of brand um, in the age of the tablet is an important one and very significant for, for publishers. Um, when publishers ask me um, how to, to move uh, uh, nicely and intelligently into this whole world of, of multi-platforms, I always tell them, you already have one very good thing going for you, which is your brand. Uh, when you're talking about newspapers or even magazines, uh, the name of that newspaper, the name of that magazine uh, carries a lot of weight. Uh, even with readers who may not be reading a publication at the moment, they know that the publication is there. They've seen their parents, their grandparents reading this newspaper, this magazine. So the brand is the one link uh, with the audience. Not only the audience you have, but the audience, the potential audience that you would like to have. And so with that come, comes the whole idea of brand extension. Once you have that brand, and if you are committed to the, uh, to the media quartet, which is the, the telephone, the online, print, and the tablet, then uh, the, the question is, how can we make that brand come out strongly in all of these platforms, but in a uniform way? And I mentioned the recent examples in my presentation of, of the New Republic, a billboard, um, a series of publications that have a history that are iconic, and they have been able to extend that brand and capitalize on that brand by emphasizing how it looks uh, throughout. But the logo, itself is not the only thing you do. You extend the brand also with other elements of, of the publication's DNA, such as the typography, for example. People recognize publications according to typographic schemes that they are used to seeing. Even the lay person who has no idea what the name of a typeface is recognizes a typeface and can relate that to a product, just like a two-year-old can get hungry suddenly when they see the golden arches of McDonald's. I mean, there is the whole idea of an icon. There's the whole idea of something that, that you identify with. So brand is very strong. And in the day of the multimedia quartet, brand is extremely important. And I think it's up to the designers and the people planning how they will extend the brand to capitalize on it uh, typographically, uh, visually, and in any other way. The mass availability of digital tools have uh, affected design greatly, actually. Um, not only it's allowed people that normally wouldn't be able to create to actually create, um, but it's also allowed designers to become a lot more efficient. Uh, the downside of this is um, it's made people very, very lazy um, because the tools allow you to do certain things, and it's some of them are actually relatively limited. So your design is only as good as the tools allow you to be. And that's created an industry, I believe, for the past 20 years or so of lazy designers that essentially is unwilling to go out of their way. Um, so for example, things like Photoshop, um, Illustrator, people actually start using templates, um, automated processes to actually just get things done. Um, a very good example is when you actually look at some of the assets that's been generated for the apps um, across multiple devices, multiple resolutions, multiple pixel densities people actually don't go the extra step of going in back into the asset itself and then adjusting the actual assets themselves so that it's optimized for a particular device. Um, I think moving forward into the future, um, I think there's going to be a lot more custom tools that people will be building for themselves so that they can actually do um, a lot of differentiation when it comes to design. And that is starting to happen. I think it's safe to say that the brands that we're most familiar with today are the ones that have been successful. Um, if, there have, if they've faced insurmountable challenges of getting across different media, there's a tendency to slide out of relevance, which is the real risk of not addressing all those challenges. I think the kinds of challenges of moving from one medium to another 
come down to making sure that people connect to what your brand is about in each space. Maybe not necessarily seeing the exact same representation of it, but feeling like the personality and the messaging and uh, the overall feeling of it manages to come through with the elements uh, in play in each place. I think what's exciting about publishing today is that it's not just one medium. It's not just newspapers. It's not just magazines. It is all of these different platforms. And what's exciting about that is that you can reach new audiences or your existing audience in an entirely new way. And that's a little scary, admittedly. It's a little terrifying um, to try to make that transition. But I think that's an exciting time. And I think we are in a very exciting time for publishing. And that's what I think this whole event is about. Is, I mean, it's adventures in publishing. It's a fun way to say, we're a little terrified, but we're also moving forward, and it's really, really exciting. If uh, there is one thing you'd like people to take away from this event, what would it be? If there's one thing that I would want people to take, to take away from the event, it would be the fact that you really always, always, always have to be considering the end user. I think sometimes we get so wrapped up in, okay, well, how do we transition this magazine to the iPad or to, the, uh, to a mobile device that we forget, oh, humans use these things. And I think that we always have to remember the human behind the story, the human behind the reading of the actual story itself as well. So always remembering the user, which seems like a very easy thing to, uh, to remember, but it's actually incredibly difficult when you're getting into the nitty gritty of how other things work. Um, just focusing on people all the way through the process, I think, is, is the most important key. At The New Yorker, we're trying to uh, 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 increase the, the avenues in which, which readers can access the content. Um, for longtime readers who are, who are fond of and, and love the, the print magazine, that's always there for them, but also for newer readers who are uh, more familiar with a website or a tablet or a phone edition, we have that covered as well. So hopefully we can broaden our, our, uh, our audience by simply being in more places uh, uh, more times. And then uh, in terms of the, the new digital age and how print, um, how print will fare, uh, I can only speak for The New Yorker. The New Yorker um, has, a, has a very solid readership. Um, and uh, the, the, expectation I, the, the expectation that we have is that um, our, the true readership will always, will always be there um, this, the new digital age will only provide, only offer um, opportunities f for uh, better, better storytelling, uh, more multimedia, more, more video, more audio. All these things only enhance uh, the storytelling story capabilities of The New Yorker. Hi there, my name is Marie Oldham and I work for INSP, which is the International Network of Street Papers. We are an NGO based in Glasgow and we support over 100 different street papers and magazines in 40 countries. Um, street papers are sold by homeless people as a way to earn an income. And today at the um, Brand Perfect Adventures in Publishing event, we were the beneficiary of the masterclass. Um, so I've been talking today, um, presenting to the delegates about the, the various, the, the uniqueness of our network and the various challenges that we face moving forward. And we talked about those challenges in three different areas. So the, the switch from, the move away from um, print media is is already and is going to be a huge issue for, for street papers we anticipate in the future. Some street papers and within our network have really experienced a, a dip in sales recently and it's, it, we can say that n not all have. Some are doing incredibly well. There are some in, in North America and across Europe who, who are doing really well and are, are, are seeming to, to buck this trend in the shift to digital. But we are aware that over the course of um, a year or five or certainly ten years that that won't always be the case. So we're really keen to um, to try to find a solution to take the, the street paper model and, and our network into the digital age but still retaining what is very, very crucial to the street paper concept and that's the transaction between the vendor and the, the reader, the buyer on the street. So that's what we're here today um, to do and we're, we're really keen to, to get some ideas for that. I think the, the biggest key to any publisher uh, being successful across multiple platforms is first and foremost knowing your audience and which platforms they're actually using. Um, it is, it's very difficult to, to think that you can be everywhere all the time, um, you know, across tablet, mobile, web, and even TV now emerging. Uh, for many publishers, uh, the entire landscape has changed, so it's a very daunting task to take on. 
Um, so I think it's first and foremost understanding where they are, what they're using, how they're consuming your media, uh, and then having a full, uh, fully mapped out plan against how you're going to connect with them across these different platforms. Uh, and then uh, seamless connectivity across these platforms from a branding perspective is of utmost importance, uh, simply because you don't want to have sort of a disjointed uh, relationship with your consumer as they're taking in and, and, and consuming your content. It's interesting to hear uh, this characterized as a battle between technologists, publishers, and authors. I think this is exactly the kind of situation in which there are no winners without people genuinely collaborating, talking to each other, learning, upskilling, and doing their absolute best to, uh, to maximize the opportunities that are out there. I think what's so special and important about the publishing industry at the moment is that there is this um, vista of opportunities and potential and excitement that suddenly opened up for everybody with the accessibility of new technology and uh, what that makes possible. There's a, a sort of miraculous quality to what we can do with information and with publishing now and I think the winners will ultimately be the people with the best imagination and the best networking skills and the ability to work together to make interesting, compelling things happen. Hi, we're here, we're here today at Brand Perfect Tour New York at Condé Nast and we're talking all about adventures in publishing. What's Brand Perfect? Brand Perfect is an open global think tank conceived by Monotype to bring together brands, designers and developers to discuss how to take brands across new media. So today, our challenge is to deliver better experiences across all media types. And we've heard this morning, interestingly, uh, that Condé Nast, as a very established publisher, have created their own studio to deliver branded experiences in this way. Uh, we've also heard from American Express, from Jen Eldon, um, that they created Amex Open as a publishing platform to reach a new community of small businesses. And now we're all working together in a masterclass to create new ideas for uh, the international network of st street papers, who are a global network of vendors that uh, are generally homeless people trying to make a living um, by providing news and something of value to the uh, local communities that they serve. So it's, it's an interesting challenge this because you have a lot of cultural issues in the mix of course and you also have to think about how can you really benefit the vendor first and foremost and make sure, sure that they have a, they can maintain a living um, over and above providing just a you know a, a publication